All right, guys, we're into the second to last week of lectures um, and new material. So next week will be the last set of lectures and new material, and then that's it for the year. So good job keeping up with all of this, really, truly. I know it's been really tough, so nice job. Keep up the good work. you got two weeks left of new stuff, and then you're on summer break. So today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on graphing tangent and cotangent. There will be a separate video for secant and cosecant. Um, a lot of the notes you guys are going to want to do on your own and then check your answers as we go. All right, so you're going to fill out a lot of it on your own and then check the answer key on the class website. Okay, so we're going to talk about tangent and cotangent today. One thing we want to be aware of is that unlike sine and cosine that have standard periods of 2 pi, the standard period of tangent and cotangent is only pi radians, which means that these graphs will repeat in pi radians or 180 degrees instead of 2 pi radians or 360 degrees, which um, is the standard period for sine or cosine. Okay, so here's the approach for graphing tangent and cotangent. Um, it's less about figuring out um, <clears throat> all of the information that we had from the previous lecture, which is like amplitude, phase shift, all those key points, and then laying them all out. It's more about thinking of tangent or cotangent in terms of sine and cosine, and then figuring out where those points are going to lie. So here's how we're going to approach this. And then once you know the key points for tangent and cotangent, it'll get a little bit easier. We can define tangent instead of as tangent as sine over cosine. Remember that tangent is y over x. Well, the y values on the unit circle represent the sine values. The x values on the unit circle represent the cosine values. So tangent is also sine over cosine. That's a trig property that we'll talk about next week as well. So let's think about this. Tangent is going to have special values. Those are going to become the key points. So let's think about where tangent is 0. Where is tangent equal to 0? Well, it's equal to 0 when the numerator sine of x is equal to 0. So tangent is 0 where sine is 0. Well, where is sine 0 on the unit circle? It's 0 at 0 radians. It's also 0 at pi radians. Everywhere cosine is 1. Now, because tangent has a standard period of pi, that means that we space these zeros out by pi radians. So the next zero will be at 2 pi, and then at 3 pi, and then at 4 pi, and we can go backwards going negative pi, negative 2 pi, etc. So we'll see zeros spaced out um, at all the pi's. Now, there's also uh, asymptotes and tangent and cotangent. So where are we undefined? Because tangent can be represented as sine over cosine, Anytime cosine or the denominator is 0, we're going to have an asymptote. So where is cosine 0? Well, cosine 0 at pi over 2. It's also 0 at 3 pi over 2 on the unit circle. That's where sine is 1 and negative 1. And again, we see pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. They're spaced out by pi radians. So the next asymptote is going to be pi radians away from 3 pi over 2. And then another pi radians will be another asymptote. We can count that backwards as well. Okay. So then, um, let's start graphing this. We have zeros at all of the pi values. Zero, pi, two pi, and we see, remember, standard period is pi. That means that it takes pi radians to start repeating points. So that's where we see the length between these key points as pi. And so we can go backwards as well, counting by pi there. Okay, and then we're told that we have asymptotes at pi over 2. That's where cosine is 0. We can't divide by 0 at 3 pi over 2. Okay, where else are we going to see these asymptotes then? Well, again, the asymptotes are also pi radians apart from one another. So to get from this asymptote backwards to the next one, we're going to go pi radians. We're going to see another asymptote at negative pi over 2 and another one at negative 3 pi over 2. Those are the only asymptotes that fit on the graph here. All right, there's two other values that we're going to plot for co uh, tangent and cotangent. That is 1 and negative 1. Those become part of the key point um, 
uh, order and then we will plot these points. So where is tangent one? Well, tangent is one. I'm gonna write it up here because I'm running out of room where sine and cosine are equal to each other. Okay, so where is sine and cosine equal to each other? That is 45 degrees or pi over four. And then we're going to spread out, right? Again, pi radians later. Um, another place where tan, uh, sine and cosine are equal to each other is down in the third quadrant at 5 pi over 4. And hopefully we can see these ones are spaced pi radians apart. I can't graph any more um, on the right side of the graph, but we can graph a 1 at negative 3 pi over 4 and negative 7 pi over 4. All right, last one that we're going to graph part of the key point order. Where is tangent negative 1? Well, that's where sine and cosine are equal to each other, but 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So that occurs in the second and the fourth quadrants. So the second quadrant is going to be at 3 pi over 4. We're going to see a value of negative 1 and 7 pi over 4 in the fourth quadrant. Okay, going backwards again, these are pi radians apart from each other, keeping up with that standard period negative pi over 4, and negative 5 pi over 4. Those are all that we can fit. So here's what's left. Graphing the tangent curve, because we've got asymptotes, our tangent curve looks like this. It almost looks like a cubic function or a cubic curve, where we follow the asymptotes to the left and to the right. I'm going to draw half arrowheads at the ends of these curves to represent that we're approaching an asymptote. All right, so to make our lives easier when we get to the next example of tangent, here's what matters. If we start at zero, let's talk about those key points. For tangent, it is going to be zero, one, asymptote, negative one, zero. We're going to start and end at zero. So zero, one, asymptote, negative one, zero. But again, you can always think about tangent in terms of sine and cosine and then graph accordingly. Okay, now we're going to focus the next example more similarly to how we did last week's um, sine and cosine curves where we're finding the subinterval length and then we know based on the subinterval length where each key point is going to lie. Okay, last tangent example I'm going to walk you guys through and then you guys are going to try the last two at the bottom of the page on your own. Let's talk about the tangent of 2x. So here's the deal. We know that the standard period is pi. And the same way we find the period of a function for sine and cosine, we take that standard period and we divide it by the frequency. So in this case, the tangent of 2x has a period of pi over 2. Subinterval length, also the same for sine and cosine. We take that period and we divide it by 4. There are four subinterval lengths. There are five key points, four intervals between those um, that make up that subinterval length. So the subinterval length here is pi over 8. So there's going to be a key point for tangent every pi over 8 radians, which is every tick mark that's listed on that handout. Okay, if we know the key point order for tangent, um, then we can just plot those key points every pi over 8 radians. So for tangent, we start at 0, and then we go to 1, and then we have an asymptote, and then negative 1, 0, 1, asymptote, negative 1, 0, 1, asymptote. Okay, I'm going to continue that direction, but let me first go backwards. If we go backwards, negative pi over 8, we see the pattern going backwards. We have negative 1, and then we have an asymptote, and then 1, 0, negative 1, asymptote. So I'm going to fill out this graph. I'll be right back. Okay, we've got all the curves filled out. We can see by looking at the handout, there are many, many more curves of tangent in example B than there was in example A. And that's because that frequency changed from A to B. Um, B has a frequency of two. That means that we see two curves in every standard period of pi, whereas in example A, we only saw one curve in every standard period of pi. So there should be double the amount of curves um, from A to B. Now you guys are gonna try C and D on your own and then check your answers on the class website for that answer um, key. All right, last one for today. We're getting into cotangent. So very similar to how sine and cosine are related. Sine and cosine, same curve. One is just a phase shift of the other. 
cotangent and tangent are similar in that respect as well. We're going to have a phase shift. We'll also see a reflection actually, um, but we're going to approach it very similarly to how we approach tangent. So let's talk about cotangent. We can define cotangent as the cosine of x over the sine of x. It's the reciprocal of tangent. So if tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay, so let's think about it. Where is cosine uh, zero is where cotan is zero. So where's cotangent zero? That's when cosine is zero. So cosine is zero at pi over two and three pi over two, and then we'll see a spacing of pi um, radians for every zero that we've got. <clears throat> where is cotangent undefined? Well, that's where sine is zero this time. So when we divide by zero, we have um, a value that's undefined. Sine is zero at zero, pi, two pi, three pi. So again, we're gonna space out pi radians because the period here is pi. Okay, so let's put what we've got down and then we'll talk about those ones and negative ones that are also going to contribute to the key point order. Okay, at uh, for cotangent, we have zeros now at pi over two, and 3 pi over 2. Those are the only zeros I can fit to the right of the um, y-axis. Okay, spacing pi radians moving to the left of the y-axis. I know that this is pi radians here. And then another pi radians is going to take us to negative 3 pi over 2. All right. Asymptotes then occur where sine is zero, so sine is zero at zero. So cotangent actually starts with an asymptote. And then every pi radians, we're gonna have a new asymptote. So that was different. Remember, tangent started at zero, not with an asymptote. Okay. So next, where is cotangent 1? Well, it's very similar to tangent. Cotangent is 1, where cosine and sine are equal to one another. Cosine and sine are equal to one another in the first quadrant at pi over 4, and in the third quadrant at 5 pi over 4. So we can see where those 1s are going to play into the order of key, pair, uh, key points now. And then lastly, where is cotangent negative 1? Well, cotangent is negative 1, where sine and cosine are equal to one another, but one is positive and one is negative. So that occurs in the third, uh, excuse me, second quadrant at 3 pi over 4, and in the fourth quadrant at 7 pi over 4. So we can now see where those negative 1s are going to fall into the key point pattern for cotangent. And I'm going to sketch the curve. Same shape as tangent, we just see a reflection and a phase shift, essentially. Okay, so let's talk about the order of key points, and then we'll approach the second problem with the order of key points. Starting at zero, we have an asymptote, and then we go to one, zero, negative one, asymptote. All right, I'm going to underline this. Those ones and negative ones are going to change depending on what your amplitude for tangent and cotangent is. If it was 2 cotan x, we would go to 2 and negative 2 instead of 1 and negative 1. All right, let's try it with the order of key points and um, finding the period in some interval length for the last example I'm going to work through with you guys. All right, so last one, the cotangent of 2x. Here we go, same way we find the period for sine and cosine, except for we take the standard period of cotan, which is pi, divided by the frequency. Subinterval length is then pi over 2, it's period divided by 4. So subinterval length is pi over 8, very similar to how we graphed the tangent of 2x. Okay, cotangent, order of key points, always starts with an asymptote, and then pi over 8, our subinterval, we're going to go 1, 0, negative 1, asymptote, repeat that pattern, 1, 0, negative 1, asymptote. All right, I'm going to fill out the rest of the graph. I'll be right back. 
All right, now we can see a better comparison here between A and B because the frequency went from one to two from A to B. We see twice the number of curves in part B than we see in part A. Um, and that's what the graphs of cotangent look like. So give C a try and then try the last example at the bottom of the notes where you're finding the period and subinterval length and then identifying the transformation. The answer key for the notes handout is posted on the class website.